welcome to this second tutorial in the Outpost Builder, the TSM add-on Outpost Builder, uh, where we are going to have a deep dive into the Make Everything Factory setup. Now I'm at the Make Everything Factory and um, we know from previous uh, tutorials that you always use red feeding into the Make Everything Stop this is how we subtract values from the Make Everything Combinator. And um, where shall we start? Okay, I think people are a little bit confused over what these combinators do and what all of this is. Well, let's start off with the idea that you have a brand new Make Everything factory. Um, and we'll just copy this bit. Whack it down. Uh, oh, my bots are probably turned off for some reason. Um, is that there or is it fake? <laughs> fake. Okay. So we have a second make everything stop. If this was the entirety of what we had, I would suggest you get rid of those and you just have the wire leading from here uh, into your inserters. This is because the amount coming out of this will be the exact correct amount for, um, and it'd be nice if a demand was created, but uh, we don't have one currently. Um, so this outlines the demand. If you remember from here, you've got all of these uh, stops and when you get a demand um, from one of them, it will feed directly into here. And we use this to, first of all, set a requester. Um, we have set requests being fed by the screen wire from the Make Everything. So that will mean that the requester is going to order uh, exactly what's in the constant combinator. Then, in addition to that, we have here whitelist as an um, and it also set filters. Whitelist means include everything in our list. Set filters will set uh, filters as long as the value coming in here is positive. Um, then it will enable the filter to pick up that item. Now we're using filter inserters, not filter stack inserters, because if you notice on the filter stack inserter, um, here we go filter stack inserter. If you notice, there's only one spot. The problem with one spot is that if you are having trouble building that just one item, you will have no delivery of any sort whatsoever, but a train that will go backwards and forwards delivering nothing. So it's better to have a slightly slower load in my view, because this all happens behind your back anyway, you don't even have to pay attention to it. Um, it's better to have slightly slower but more flexibility in picking up stuff. So we use the normal filter inserter. They're still reasonably quick. Um, and we certainly don't want to override the stack size and make it smaller. That really wouldn't be productive. So set filters. That's how this one will only load what we actually need even if there was some residual in here from a different order. Now. You in, in addition, you need the read hand contents. What this does is it counts what's actually picked up by the inserter. Now, the difference between pulse and hold is pulse will only output this signal into a single tick. Remember, there's 60 ticks every second if your game client is running fast enough. We want pulse because we only want to count this once. If we had hold, we'd be counting it every every tick that there's anything in here while it's swinging, we'd be counting. So we don't want that. We just want pulse. That's why we use pulse. That's why we use read hand contents. Um, so that explains this one. Now, this um, inserter here is another filter inserter and it's going the other way. We don't want it just unloading all the stuff we need, so we use blacklist and we just use set filters. We don't need to count, we don't need to read, we don't need to set stack size, any of these things. We just need to blacklist, as in do the opposite of this one. Uh, blacklist means you cannot pick up the items 
that um, are coming through and being set in your filter. Now this isn't quite perfect because you can only have five items here and you may have a much larger list. Um, that potentially would let this cycle some items, but they're only going to cycle backwards and forwards here, so um, it's an inefficiency we can live with. Uh, when you get down to five items, it will work perfectly. Um, this guy will, well, say we had something like uh, blue inserters times 300. Whoops. Blue inserters uh, times 300. So, um, that's on. What that means is we now have a request for 200 here. You can see the blue inserter mark there because it's being set as a filter and you can see it in there set as a filter. But if you had more than just this one item, uh, it doesn't matter how many we're ordering because we're out of the zone anyway. Um, we're not even making these in my make everything here. Um, six items. If you had six items, you will see that only five make it, and only five make it here. So um, here though, you get all six. So you could be getting some items that potentially could be unloaded. Uh, them's the breaks. It doesn't really matter, as I say, and this is as simple as it can be if you only have one inserter. But one inserter would be a bit slow, so we don't want just one inserter. Hence, we come up here, the only difference up here is that we have 12 inserters. We could make them 24 to make it really fast, but because we have 12, what we want to do is limit the amount each one of these boxes is ordering. Um, and the best way to do that is to have an arithmetic combinator. We're dividing by 12 and we're outputting each. So we're not changing the signal, we're just dividing all of the signals by 12. So when we run out of items to order, these will drop to zero. There could be a rounding issue with this, and so it is possible that you should actually add one to the tally. Um, each equals each plus one, which would be... Uh, oh, we already have one. So you could have another combinator here, which um, you would simply have each each plus one and output each. So that would only count the items that are actually being ordered and it would give you one more than the divided by 12 if this, instead of just uh, going here and going across, um, actually if it came from this, uh, why, that's interesting, why do we actually go there? first. So we're outputting our value and we're sending it to this one. Uh, we're sending it to the output of this one. Oh, I don't need this. I don't need this. Right, that's what this is for. If the amount, if the amount is greater than zero, I'm setting this to one. So that's another way of doing it. I don't actually need to have the add one. Um, and the reason is rounding. So if we come back here, because uh, it might be a little bit easier, you can see it more easily here, and we use that arithmetic combinator, um, and it's a divide by 12, uh, each divided by 12, each divided by 12, output each. Now you can see what values these are. They're not multiples of 12. So if we take a wire and we bring it in here, you can see, uh, well no you can't see because it's not actually giving me the output signals because we have no wire coming there from the output. All right. Just to make it easier, I'll put a pole here temporarily so that you can see. Right. Um, oh, there's no, it's not doing anything because there's no power. That's the real reason there's an issue. 
there. Now we've got an it there, I don't need the poll. So you can see these items coming in, you can see the effect of dividing by 12. So if you look at say these um, blue undergrounds, 100 is coming in, um, we're dividing by 12, we're getting eight. But if you remember your math from school, 12 eights are 96, meaning you'd be four short, okay? So all of this does is we take the value from the ME combinator, this one will give us one, okay? We then, the same value gets passed through to here, where we divide by 12, we then come back, combine the signal with this one, which is the division by 12 plus an extra one. So let's have a look what happens here if we have exactly the same thing, which in this case, oh, I've got plenty of those, I don't know why I keep building them. Um, if that is not going through there, but instead comes through here, then it goes through here, then this one goes from there to there, and what's on here is each, where each is greater than zero, set each to the value of one, you can see the values there. You can see that we have ones coming through here. Um, if we now have this poll so that we can see what a combined outcome is. Uh, where are we, where are we? I could even feed it in here actually, but where's my wire? There it is, okay. We come into here. You can now see that we've got 17, we've got nine, we've got seven, seven, six, and three. Um, Let's take our example with the blue undergrounds. 10, 100 uh, blue undergrounds divided by 12 gives you eight. 12 eights are 96. However, this one will add one. You add one, you get nine, that's 108. And by doing that, we're not going to be shortchanged here. We're going to get exact amount that we need and um, slightly more but slightly more is always better than slightly less slightly less means you can't finish your project slightly more means that well i mean if you're still building uh, maybe you need the extra anyway but even if you don't you can easily run a rubbish train to collect the bit that you're missing and obviously you change the 12 depending on how many of these that you have um, if we still had two wagons but we put another six on each side we'd divide by 24. If you add more wagons this way you, again it's just the count of the inserters we want this to be an even uh, division and obviously because we're adding one um, the more of these you have the slightly worse your excess will be but as you can see I mean for the numbers that we're actually ordering here um, the amount over is not really that great uh, 12 nines is sort of about the worst, it's 8. You can't get worse than 12 items over though. Um, so it's really not that big a deal. Uh, the one thing that could happen is these could uh, need to pick up one more, but there's enough sitting there so that it actually picks up like four more. Um, and so you can actually get more than what this suggests if you... Uh, unless if you really wanted to be pedantic, you could change the override stack size to one, but you're just slowing down your load for no good reason. Um, with that said, if I go to my map, I think up here I've got some partially built areas that um, if any of them fall within a outpost station, then it would be good to give that outpost station a nudge, but I don't think any do. What's this, is that a, no, I've killed that as an outpost station. Uh, is this an out, there we go, That oh, that's one that happened just before. And in fact, that means that there's nothing left to do there because it's all been done. Uh, okay, never mind, I can't really show. Um, unless this connects to an outpost station somewhere. Uh, I don't th think that it does. Uh, it goes to this one, but this is no longer an outpost station. Um, no. All right, never mind. Um, let's just wrap it there. I think that's all the information you should need. Um, quick refresher. 
whitelist this side, blacklist this side. This side make sure that you, I'm still in map mode. This side make sure you have set filters and you have read hand contents pulse. This side, oh, and you don't have override. This side, it's just set filters blacklist. Uh, hopefully that's all you need. And uh, happy outpost building. Bye-bye for now.